what to do if you've got a lot of boxes. Get a box loader. And that's the subject of this review. The model is made by Drake Collectibles and comes in two shipping cartons. And that's one for the Prime Mover and one for the trailer. We'll get the Prime Mover onto the Weybridge and it's £1.7, which is 660 gramlets. And for the box loader, it's £2.2, two two which is 960 gramlets. Let's start with the box loader box and let's open up the shipping carton and see what's inside. There's a nice photo of the box loader on the box. And if we look at the other side, there's some more information about it. And underneath that includes some technical information. And in fact, Boxloader itself is a French company, but it's mounted on an OFI trailer and that's part of the Drake group. The part number for this version is ZT09245. Opening up the box, we see the usual style of tray and we'll take a look at the paperwork shortly. It's great to see that the trays are held together by clips at each end, but actually the trays are also taped together. And I think that's been done because the clips are a little bit loose. So the trusty knife comes out again and then we get to see the model itself. There's a shipping container, the trailer, and also a bag of parts. In fact, the bag was initially missing, but was supplied very quickly by Drake Collectibles. Included is a nice reprint of a brochure, and that starts with the box loader crane details, and then moves on to the OFI trailer details. And after that, there's a few more nice pictures of the box loader trailer. For the model, there's an included printed card and that covers the features of the trailer and then goes on to describe the functions of the model. The Prime Mover is a Kenworth K200 K2.3 version and its model number is Z01577. Again, there's more paperwork to look at. And there's no time for the knife to get rusty because there's more tape to be cut. Separating the lid, we get our first chance to see the K200 and the bits and pieces that it comes with. The brochure is another reprint of the brochure of the real truck and it complements the model very well. We start with the Kenworth and there are a couple of mirrors to add one on each side. They fit into holes, but they're actually quite loose. So you might need to pack the holes with something like plastic putty. Also included is an oversize sign, but we will leave the sign off. If you've got a runaway spare wheel, there is a space on the trailer to tie it down and you can just put it in the rack underneath. Also included are some dunces hats, which you can wear if they fit you, or you can fit them to be carried on the trailer. But because of the design, you can only fit two. We're fixing the trailer onto the prime mover at this funny angle because that makes it easier to control the clip on the fifth wheel. This is the Cranes Etc patented method. The instruction sheet talks about removable container locks, but in practice they seem to be stuck on. But actually that doesn't matter because you can still put the container that's supplied with the model onto the trailer and it fits well. And with that, you've completed the assembly. The full model put onto the Waybridge comes in at one pounds 14 ounces or about 850 grams. Kenworth K200 model first appeared many years ago 
and this K2.3 version continues the high standard. The underside of the engine and transmission is modelled, and the big fuel tanks have got crossbars added. There are big differential casings on the rear axles, and the suspension system is modelled. As you would expect, there are different tyres, front and rear. There are beacon lights on the high roof, and there are various horns and lights on the lower section. The visor has got a box loader graphic on it, and the whole model is in a box loader corporate colour scheme. There are delicate windscreen wipers, and the big grille looks particularly good. In fact, the appearance of the whole front end is impressive with the lights, big chrome bumper bar, and there's also a number plate. The side of the cab is highly detailed with lots of separate bits of chrome work. And the decoration has the big box loader X. It's the tiny details which make the model stand out. And that includes properly textured steps up into the cab. Behind the cab is an excellent chromed exhaust. And there are some super thin stays to hold it in position. Again, there's more box loader decoration on the back of the cab. And the busy looking appearance is also enhanced by the big air intake. There's also a set of coiled lines and they plug into holes in the walkway. Other nice details include the chrome work in and around the fuel tanks. And also on the wheel arches. The chromed wheels also look great. At the back there's a light bar and the same dummy number plate. The trailer structure has a very high metal content. And among the fine detailing is the pipework that runs along the length. The landing legs are metal parts. And in the centre of the trailer we have the engine and a tank. Moving to the rear and the axles are precision modelled. And that includes the suspension. The tyres look good and it's always nice to see real flexible rubber mud flaps. Looking now the right way up and realistic hoses run to the loader cranes. The large rivets would have looked better painted to match the rest of the loader crane. The structure of the trailer is very convincing and it's enhanced by the detailing such as the tank with its filler caps. Another high point of detailing is the engine and it's made up of a number of different components. The wheel arches are plastic presumably to match the real machine and the chromed wheels look very smart. The soft OFI branded mud flaps are also a very nice touch. And the other details at the rear all look convincing. In fact, a high point of the detailing is the very tiny graphics, and it's worth getting the microscope out. These are some of the most detailed small graphics we've seen on a model. And if your eyesight's good enough, it really gives it an authentic look. And if your eyesight's not good enough, you can always watch this video. The container is a standard WSI model's part, and that branding is underneath. This one has Drake Group decoration, and it's expertly applied to the ridged sides. Also really good are the graphics and door locks at the back. Back to looking at the Kenworth, and there is notched steering at the front. And at the maximum it gives a reasonable angle. The suspension at the rear is really good and both axles float independently. And there's also independent steering on the front wheels. Driving along the cranes etc super highway and it rolls well in a straight line. But let's give it a go with the steering engaged. And if it's set to the maximum, the front wheels won't roll because they're fouled. But at the intermediate point, they will roll, so you can trace out a shallow curve. If you like rock and roll, then the suspension on the Kenworth allows you to just that sitting in the cab. The model features a working fifth wheel, and the lock is powered by a spring. There's also another option on the fifth wheel. It has a modest range of movement in the longitudinal direction, and it clips into place at various points. The big cab tilts forward and it works very well because it achieves a great angle, and it reveals a very detailed engine. Included with the Kenworth is a plastic tool, and you can use that to help open the cab doors. That's because the fit of the doors is very good, 
and you need something to prise them open which doesn't damage the paintwork. If you can get your eyeball inside the cab, it's an excellent detailed dashboard. The seats in the cab also have a springy air ride action. Moving on to the trailer and the axles spin freely. And each of the axles also has independent suspension. Towards the front there are landing legs and they can be extended in the usual way by unscrewing them. So you can pose the trailer without a prime mover. Moving on to the box loader cranes and they are fully functional. And the first thing to do is to lower the stabilizers which are telescopic. Once they're in position you need to lock them. And that's achieved by inserting small pins in the hydraulic ram jackets and inserting another pin into the extended stabilizer leg. Once that's done, the whole arrangement is fixed and stable. The crane can then be raised up into position and it has chains permanently fixed ready for the container. Again, you need to lock with pins and you can carefully fit the lifting chains under the container. It is a little bit fiddly for those with salami sized fingers, but once they're in place, it is stable. The chains probably work with most WSI containers, but they probably wouldn't work with containers made by others. To make sure other members of the family don't get too close to the model, you can put some cones out. It's easy to see from this arrangement how a 20 foot container gets loaded. And if you slide out the two loader cranes, you can see how a 40 foot container could be loaded. But how about two 20 foot containers? Well, using the giant hand crane would be cheating, but there is a way to do it, and that is to put the two 20 foot containers together and to lock them where their ends meet up. The loader cranes are then used to lift up the two 20 foot containers. This is another high quality model from Drake Collectibles. The standard of detailing is extremely high and both the prime mover and the trailer have a high metal content. The functionality of the box loader is interesting and that allows it to be posed to make some interesting displays. It is an interesting and unusual haulage model, which is excellent.